What's up, super friends? Welcome back. My name is Tony, aka Son of the Bat, and you are watching the Hall of Justice. It's that could blow up the Welcome back, guys. Today, of course, as always, I am recording from San Diego Comics, one of the oldest comic shops in San Diego with one of the largest varieties of back issues. And today, we'll be going over this week's brand new issues. And to start things off, we're actually going to be going with some independent comic books, starting with Image, and like Mark, sorry, <laughs> Millar, and Oliver Copiel's new comic book, The Magic Order. Now, this is something that's pretty interesting, and a lot of people have been pretty hyped up for, reason being, it got picked up immediately by Netflix. So, there's going to be a show coming out soon. This is the first issue coming out this week, and it's actually really, really good. It shows basically a society of what you'd call magicians or wizards uh, within this world, and they're kind of commonplace. And you have a family starting off with their shows that they've been doing since the 1800s. You have a murder that begins the comic book, and you have a funeral as well. So there's a lot of things going on. There's a murder that needs to be solved. The art in here is amazing, and it's just a really, really good start to a really, really good book. And I really, really <laughs> highly recommend it. So again, that is Mark Millar. It's the start of his new series, The Magic Order. Continuing with Image, this is the first issue of The Weatherman. Now, this is by Jody Lahiep and Nathan Fox. And it takes place way in the future. I believe it's 2770 or 2720. And it's actually on the planet Mars. It's been colonized at this point, and there's a large population. It doesn't really tell you what happens to the people on Earth, but apparently something does happen in regards to the population decreasing because you are told that billions of people have died. Now, the weatherman is exactly that, a weatherman for one of the channels over, I believe, the whole planet of Mars. And he gets involved at the end with the disappearance of these billions of people that have supposedly died. So there's a lot more that needs to be unraveled in this story. It's really, really good. I liked it for a first issue. I've never read anything by Jody Lehup, but some of the art in here is really, really good too. And it's a fun read. It, it gets kind of goofy in the beginning, but then it gets very serious in the last couple of panels. So again, that is The Weatherman from Image Comics. And finishing things off with Image, we have Stellar issue number one, and this is by Joseph Keating and Brett Blevins. This is a pretty interesting book. It follows a bounty hunter, I believe. The actual character is, is a bounty hunter, through her returning a prisoner that she's going to get her bounty for. A couple of things happen. The prisoner tries to get some background into her history, and she's not really giving in regards to that information. Then her past does come back to haunt her towards the last panel, and you start to understand a little bit about what's going on with her and what she's really trying to run away from. The art in here, the pencil isn't too dynamic for me, but I will say that the colorist did a really good job and made it very vibrant. A lot of the panels in here are really fun to read through and look at. And so it's, it's a good start. I wouldn't say it's too strong, but it is a fun start to a brand new book. And again, that's Stellar with Image. Now moving over to DC, we do have the first issue of Hawkman in the Rebirth universe. So all of this is taking place after the fact that he has reemerged after the series Dark Knight's Metal. And he does delve into that. The beginning of this story is a lot of him speaking through his journal. He is an archaeologist and they do touch a lot on that in this book. There are a couple artifacts that he goes in search of, returns with. There, I believe, is a first appearance of a brand new, possibly God, and it's, it's pretty interesting. He's trying to find who he is, and all I'm going to say is that from what we know about uh, Carter Hall in regards to Hawkman is really touching the surface. We understand as Hawkman, he has been reincarnated throughout time, but there is a touch of him actually being reincarnated throughout space. I won't get into what that means, but there is a really cool panel towards the back here. And it shows you all of the different Hawkmen that have existed, not just on planet Earth. So I'll just kind of let you figure out what that means and pick up this copy. Again, it is a number one. There is a variant cover, and with the way DC is doing their variant covers, their cover Bs do look like semi-virgins. It's a beautiful cover. If you can find that one, I highly recommend it. Continuing on with DC, we do have Titans Special Number 1. This does come from the pages of No Justice, which just wrapped up, I believe, last week or a couple weeks ago with issue number 4. And it does touch on the fact that 
the source wall has been opened up and is breaching a lot of energy into our known universe. What this causes is an evolution in the metahumans that exist on Earth. So you have the original leader of the Teen Titans, Dick Grayson, as Nightwing, searching for his original team and asking for them to assist him in creating a new Titans team that is actually part of the Justice League. This is actually done by a few different writers and artists. He does run into a couple, again, of his original teammates, but you do also run into newer ones that he's teamed up with, like Miss Martian. So you do have the team getting back together, but in this case, they are working with the Justice League, and it seems pretty interesting. And the thing about this is that there's going to be two different Titans titles. There's Titans, and then I believe New Teen Titans. One of them is going to introduce the new character, Crush, which is Lobo's daughter. It's not in this one quite yet, but it is a pretty good read, and I do recommend it. Now, moving over to Marvel, we are starting off with The Thing and Infamous Iron Man in Marvel's 2-in-1. This is annual number one. Now, we're only about four issues into the actual series, but this one touches on a couple of things in regards to a bit of the history of Doctor Doom, as well as a bit of history about his father and his relationship with his father. Touches on it very lightly, but it also goes into a battle between different Universal Dooms, and you do see... I'll, I'll, the only thing I will say is you do see a council of reeds again. Won't get too far into it, but it is pretty interesting. The art is good. Uh, Zdarsky has been really good at writing this, and I've been enjoying it a lot. And let me just show you a couple of panels in here. Again, you do have the council of reeds showing back up again. I will not tell you what their plans are for the future, but you will have to pick it up to find out what. Another Marvel issue number one, but not an annual, and the beginning of a new series is Starboy. This is by hip-hop artist The Weeknd. It's actually written by him, and the art is done by Eric Nguyen. And it's pretty good. It's basically the start of this hero's journey. Uh, it's very cyborg-esque in a way in regards to his father being a scientist who's trying to save the city that they live in, and things go awry, and because of it, he gets stuck in the middle of it and becomes this new hero at the end, Starboy. So it's actually pretty good. For him being a hip-hop artist, I'm not too surprised. He does know how to write. So for him to write a full story, I was actually really, really intrigued. And I do really recommend this. I think it's a low print run. So if you do find one of these at your local comic store, definitely pick it up. Starboy from Marvel. Another number one issue that came out this week is Thor number one, and this one's really fun. It's continuing a storyline by Jason Aaron, who's been doing Thor for a little while. He also did the Thor one-shot, Gates of Valhalla, which came out a couple of weeks ago and touched on a couple of things that are being introduced in here, such as the War of the Realms. And there's characters in here that we see Thor going up against, like the Juggernaut, so that's really fun. And the fact that Thor still isn't worthy and for the most part can't get a hold of his hammer. He's getting multiple hammers, thousands of hammers made for him now, and basically just to supplement the time away from his original. He's doing the best that he can, but he's also trying to assist in helping the Asgardians who have no home anymore become refugees in the Bronx. So you see a little bit of that as well, and it's really, really fun. There is some artwork in a smaller story towards the end by Christian Ward, which I found to be absolutely amazing. The art is beautiful. Christian Ward never fails to please. And so it's a really good read. It's, it's a strong start, I believe, and there's a lot to come in the future in regards to the War of Realms for Thor. So definitely pick it up. If you're a Patreon, uh, the first five are going to be getting a copy of this, as well as the Immortal Hulk and Deadpool number one from last week. So if you are a patron, congratulations, you guys will be getting one of these. Still continuing on with Marvel, we have Old Man Logan, number 41, and the cover is basically straightforward with what's going on in the story. You have Old Man Logan going up against Kraven. This is a thrill of the hunt story where you have Kraven basically track down Old Man Logan, put him on the Savage Lands, and tell him you have basically as long as you can to survive before I hunt you. It's basically pretty straightforward and exactly what it sounds like, and the artwork in here is actually pretty decent. I was pretty happy with seeing Craven on the second panel. He looks really good, and it's, it's exciting. Right now, they're fighting each other, and of course, you have some dinosaurs that are getting in the way because it is a Savage Lands, but it's a good start to a new arc in the story, so I highly recommend picking this one up. 
Last but not least, we do have Venom number two with writer Donny Cates on this book. And the first one was amazing to me. I really enjoyed it. The fact that there is some ancient being out there that is older and is related to the symbiotes. And the fact that we're learning that there were more symbiotes prior to the Venom one coming on Earth with Spider-Man. We do get introduced to a new character. We don't have quite a name on it yet. They're calling it the Dragon. And every time we see the alien get taken over by this primordial entity, we do hear that it's called the Dragon. And we always see the translation of what's being said to God is coming. So we do get a first appearance of this character. It is a giant dragon type creature that eats the Clintar, which of course is a symbiote species. And it's really interesting and I'm really excited to see where it goes because at the end we do see that Eddie Brock does team up with Miles Morales. So really excited to see where this one goes. Again, it's Venom number two and it's available and I highly recommend it. So guys, those are the picks of the week. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please, if you want to go ahead and support this channel as well as our podcast, go to our Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash tsfpod to find out what rewards we have available for you guys. And the more that you guys contribute, the more that we can give to you. So for those who have become our patrons, thank you for supporting us. And again, if you're in San Diego, please come visit San Diego Comics off El Cajon Boulevard. They have, again, one of the largest varieties of back issues and new books that you guys might be looking for. So stop on by. That's it for today. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Bye.